uh, our society has kind of pushed us to kind of take things for granted. And so we just pass through life, not really noticing uh, or being aware why we do things or why we are the way we are. So some people are born to become really great business people, some of them very good artists, some of them very good teachers, you know, psychologists and so on. And so, you know, I think sometimes our purpose is innate to us, right? Uh, and our mission is the only thing that changes. Like what we actually do with that purpose changes throughout time, but our purpose continues, you know, throughout our life. And so it's, it's almost like the essence of who we are to the world, what we can provide value to the world. You practice that, pro that process or, or that purpose through music, through writing, through speaking in public. And so, but that purpose comes from within and out through different mediums that you learn throughout life. Like you learn to be a good writer. And, and so your purpose gets, you know, channeled through that. If we could think of purpose as a, we could think of it as several things, but if we could take a biological route or psychological route, biological psychology and say, well, evolutionally speaking, we do need a purpose to live. So we need to follow that purpose in order to survive. And we base our purpose on our survival needs. But, you know, we've become more advanced since then, since the old times where we had to just survive and not die. But now it's actually, we have all these things around us we live in a different world. We live in a safer world. So we create new means of purpose. So you could look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We have the needs at the bottom. So like the needs at the bottom are like shelter, food, and stuff like that. It's the survival needs that I just talked about. But then you go up higher and higher. And as you go higher and higher, you realize, um, oh, it turns into self-actualization. Where you're talking about being an artist, playing music, finding your purpose in those things. That's more about self-actualization. So once we've accomplished those basic survival needs, which most of us have in the modern world, so now we see more people on YouTube and stuff like that, artists, and it's not like it hasn't, artists haven't been around before, but it seems more, at least more well-known now, and more people want to kind of do a lot of that now, which makes sense. We have more of our survival needs taken care of, so now we can do that and explore that. I think the biological aspect underlies that purpose, maybe, you know, in some way, or at least when you take care of that, then you can get to that higher level uh, purpose seeking through music and art and other things that you enjoy like from the christian perspective we say mm -hmm. god has given us a purpose but even if you're not christian even if you're an atheist even if you're a nihilist nihilistic philosopher or an existential philosopher where you believe that you still have to believe as an existential philosopher even somewhat of nihilism that well then if god doesn't exist and if he doesn't create our purpose and we create our own purpose and it's up to us and it's our responsibility to follow that purpose and go for it. Even if you don't believe that God created or we don't have an innate purpose, then you have to come to believe that we have to create our own meaning under the existential view and create our own purpose. And only we're going to accomplish our purpose is by actually taking the steps to follow it. But I mean, if you believe in God, you can still say, God gave me this purpose, but I, I can't just leave it up to him. I have to take steps myself under my own free will under God to chase that purpose. Yeah. You know, you yourself created and focused, you know, the, the stress and all, all the things that you learn in life sometimes do get passed down to your next generations. It, it, it's almost inherently, or maybe, maybe it skips a generation, but it still passes on in some way, which is so fascinating, right? That we continue to have this like the skill, the skills that we have in, in our personality itself is drawn a lot from, from family members. And so, you know, maybe, maybe they can look at it in that sense, but, you know, either way, I, I feel like, you know, there's this innate purpose, right. That we all carry within ourselves and right. we just express it through different means. Like, you know, somebody may, might be like a, a good counselor, but they express it, you know, even though they're not a counselor, but maybe uh, at work, you know, they tend to be that person everyone is drawn to because they they just feel heard. They feel accepted or welcome. And turning it back to self-awareness, you have to be self-aware to have purpose, right? I mean, you, you have to ask yourself questions, you know, and you have to be willing to to ask yourself questions because I think for, for a lot of intuitive thinkers, you know, I would say, you know, I would consider you as well as an intuitive thinker. You know, we tend to be 
comfortable, you know, ever, ever since birth to, to really ask deeper questions, you know, um, some people who are more realist, you know, and, and think more realistically for them, it's harder to think about, about theoretical aspects that maybe are not, you know, real life. They, they're more like, like what's now, what's, what's in the moment kind of deal. And so they, they look at what's, what's actually the facts and what's the reality and not in the theoretical. Their self-awareness for those people come in a different way. It's more in like, oh, okay, uh, I'm a good cook. So I must try cooking to see if it's something that would be something in my life that would work out. Yeah, as a try it out. And so for them, it, it might be more of a realistic aspect of like, oh, a lot of people tell me I do this really good then I should try this, right? But for a lot of intuitive thinkers, it's more like they go to the questions like, why am I living? Like more of the philosophical aspect, like why do I exist? You know, and maybe ask themselves deeper questions. And so sometimes, you know, those people can go into deeper questions um, and can help other people ask themselves those bigger questions. Am I doing this? And why do I want this to figure out what we want yeah. for purpose? Yeah, they, they, there's a book, uh, you know, Simon Sinek. He's he's one of uh, a speaker. I think it's the reasons of why or start with why. That's what it is. Start with why. That book basically talks about, you know, how finding your why can be so important. The reason you exist, you know, and you know, there's, there's, there is, you know, for, for those viewers that are watching us right now, there is some like questions that you can kind of come out from this video asking yourself that can help you deepen your, your, um, your self-awareness and maybe get towards, uh, building, you know, or finding what career path, or maybe discovering a little bit more about yourself. So like,